We're live. <laughs> we are officially live with Aaron Harris, our co-host for the night, as Shane is currently in uh, in Florida. He's uh, in Florida with his Hello. daughter and his wife, or girlfriend, and uh, <laughs> they're having <laughs> his daughter's birthday tonight. So he might hop on for a little bit later. But in the meantime, we have a special guest host, Aaron Harris. What's going on, Aaron? What's going on? What's going on, group? <laughs> I know I'm not as good looking as Shane, but uh, I'll fill in until he gets back. There you go. There you go. <laughs> well, don't let him know that, right? <laughs> <laughs> so if you guys are watching live, hashtag live in the comments. If you're watching the replay, hashtag replay in the comments below. It is Whiskey Thursday. So, Aaron, you having something to drink tonight? Yeah, you know, me and the gin and tonic. We keep it simple here. There you go. There you go. I keep it simple in country with that fireball. <laughs> that fireball knows on the way. There you go. Right there. So, anyways... Right, we are live. Guys, let us know where you're watching from. Uh, it was interesting. I was reading the comments earlier. You know, Shay was talking about going to bed at like 8, 8 o'clock in the Eastern time zone. I was like, what? What? Some of these agency owners, man, attacking at like 4.30 in the morning. <laughs> like, I guess that's one way to get your emails read is be the first one to, to get your email out, right? <laughs> that's one way to do it. So are you an early guy or are you a late guy? How do you how are you going to email I'm probably most productive. Well, I can be productive in the morning or I can be productive at night, but I can't do both. Right. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. typically end up being a late guy. What about you? Pretty much the same. I've yeah. been trying to get back on the, on the early morning, but yeah, late, late night, less distractions. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Let us know in the comments. Are you a late person or a morning person? Uh, especially in real estate, like in real estate, I was always a morning person with, uh, with this, I don't have to be such a morning person, which is kind of nice. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I see the shirt. You got the key marketing shirt. Is that your agency? Oh, yeah. That was my agency. Yeah, we got a, uh, got some t-shirts and, and some polos and, you know, trying to step it up a little bit. There you go. You say we. So how big is the agency right now? So right now it's me plus three. You plus three. Okay, cool. Um, let's see here. Uh, nope, I can't do it. I was just realizing I didn't tag anybody, but oh, well, we're going to go with it anyways. <laughs> we'll hang out. Plus great. three. So what are the three? So pretty much we have uh, sales. Mm -hmm. uh, we have fulfillment. And then I pretty much have like a operations manager, which it, I'm pretty much training to replace me, right? Yep. As I was going to say, so what do you do? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And so at this point, I'm kind of overseeing it. Obviously, we're still in the growth phase and the training phase, but um, trying to get to to that next level where I can kind of step away a little bit and you know work on other elements of of the business. Makes sense. Makes sense. And uh, Aleo says he is a late person. So yep, I completely relate with that. <laughs> Again, in the real estate space, you know, as an agent, I always have to be a morning person uh, because got to get those expires and for sale by owners first thing in the morning, right? Makes so sense. Now with the, the marketing, like I have a little more leeway, you know, I can do a lot during the middle of the night when nobody else is bothering me, which you can do that early in the morning too, but choices. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us, Aaron, what's been going on since we last talked, man? Let's see. When's the last time we spoke? So I know we had the, the, whiskey the Christmas Thursday. thing was real brief. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So part of that, yeah. it was what the whiskey Thursday interview. And that was what back in what I, October, September? Something like that. Yeah, it was, it was, I think it was October. Yeah, so it was pretty early. So, yeah, a lot has happened since then. Um, say agency's grown quite a bit. Um, we put a whole lot more systems and processes in place, um, added some some different offers and adjustments to, to our agency structure as a whole, and um, really been focusing on that that client retention as well. So, yeah, I mean, a lot's happened since then, but uh, it's been all, all good things and all steps in the right direction. Nice. So what has been... I guess, as you've been growing, what's kind of helped you move along with your growth? Like what's kind of helped you go to the next level? Um, would you say you've gone to another level since last time we talked? And I'm going to work on getting this chat bot broadcast out real quick, get some more people in here. Um, right. I, I definitely said we go on to another level. So um, mm -hmm. I see in October, I don't remember how much we were doing in October, but I know we're, uh, so we're doing about, about 30,000 right now. Mm-hmm. So I don't, know, I don't think we were doing quite that in October. I think we may have just had our first like 20, 25. So we're doing okay. a little over 30 um, and we're on track to probably get to about 50 before the end of Q1 if everything kind of keeps going as it, uh, as it should. Mm -hmm. But the biggest thing is really just kind of having those systems and processes in place so that you can grow and you can scale. 
and then also okay. having a predictable flow of uh you know leads and appointments coming in as well so that's you know you can always you know have more business and out and outpace your turn yeah now what's your what's your retention looking like right now i know that is always one of the struggles right <laughs> So, yeah, so um, we've actually just implemented a whole lot of new things, probably effective, probably late December, January 1. Mm-hmm. So I can't really tell you how it's going to turn out just yet. But uh, right now we're probably sitting at about 25% on that, on that churn rate. So Okay. So how long is your average client actually sticking around? Probably, it's probably half for about three, four months. The other half are six months or, or more. Okay. So... Let's see. <clears throat> so basically three quarters stick with you month after month uh, from the new clients that you're bringing on. Correct. Half of those stay, you know, around three months and half of those stay six months or more. Is that right? Correct. Or half of those stay less than six yeah. months, half of those stay more. Yeah, you got it. <clears throat> okay. And how's, uh, how's the, the, the full service package that you talked about last time going for you? Um, so we haven't really changed our offer um, too much since then. Um, really just um, been getting better at selling it. And also we, we actually correct, correct that was correction. We pretty much, we do contracts now. So it's a 90 day commitment. So that's, that's another reason, you know, people Ooh, are staying like longer because they're, they're locked in now. Nice. So how did, how has that changed your close rate? Has it made a big difference? Um, so honestly, not so much. So okay. one of the things that, you know, I think the only thing stopping people from doing contracts is really yourself. You know, especially in real estate, if they're doing any type of marketing, you know, they're probably already doing six months to a year contract. And so, yeah, you're coming saying no contract, but then in reality, it's going to take 45, 60, 90 days to see that ROI anyway. So we're almost doing a service from, you know, not making sure you stick along or stick around with the sell on. Hmm. So you're saying like, basically the whole difficulty with contracts is in our heads. <laughs> That's it. Because I had the same issue I was struggling with, and uh, cause I actually recently got a coach. Uh, also, so that was one thing that's changed since then. And yeah, okay. he's pretty, you know, actually laughing at me like you're not doing six month contracts. Why, you know? <laughs> nice. And, and so we're doing baby steps. So we got three months now, and we'll probably do start implementing six months probably here, uh, probably towards the end of Q two. Okay, so you hired a coach. That's kind of big. Yeah, I, I, I would say it was, it was really big. Uh, you know had to find somebody that can kind of help us get get to that next level. Yeah. And is it, would you say it's made a difference? Uh, yeah. Three, 360 from structure to, uh, uh, layout consistency mindset. I mean, it's actually has, has made a real, real difference. Okay. And I made we, sure to find somebody that, you know, knows more than I do, um, within the space, but it also is, you know, doing, you know, multiple seven figures. So, so, what are some of the things that have changed since you got a coach? Like what, um, I guess, what would you say have made a difference? So I think the biggest thing, like I said, the, the contract thing alone was, uh, was pretty big. Um, the, the, the structure and kind of building as you, as you grow pretty much uh, my coach calls it that white water. So once you get, you know, once you get to that, that 10, that 10 K mark with, you know, everybody's looking to get to, and you get from that 10 to probably about, 10 to 50, it's kind of how he, how he ranges it. You find yourself going through what's called white water. So mm-hmm. think of like white water rafting, right? So you're, right. you're going through what, these rough patches where you're trying to figure it out. And so that's kind of where, where our agency was. And so once you get out of that white, white water, you get into, I guess, what my coach calls is predictable success, where, you know, I can, you know, pretty much get a, a guaranteed number of, uh, you know, clients coming in. Um, they'll stay for this long. Uh, this is what it takes to keep them on, keep them happy. And, you know, you just get our chat out message. Uh, yes. <laughs> so it's working it's working <laughs> white water which is the rough um kind of the what we would call in real estate the real estate roller coaster right yeah, where it, the real exactly estate roller coaster is. is something that agents go through or that i went through as an agent is where you know you're prospecting you're prospecting you're prospecting and then you start focusing on the business that you have right and so you're like all of a sudden the, the, it's going up it's going up it's going up you're working on that business the business closes and then it's like I stopped prospecting somewhere between here and here. And now it's, you know, we're on the downhill on that rope roller coaster. <laughs> and, and so you're downhill and then you're, you're like, all right, we're going to get the prospecting going. We're going to go, 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 go. And it's like, I don't even know how to explain it. It's almost like, you know, you have to keep prospecting, but like 
you also know you have to take the business and take care of the business. And you're like, so, so nervous. And maybe it was me because when I started, like I was living in my brother's basement, right? I just got married and I'm living in my brother's basement trying to do real estate. And so, you know, it's, it's uphill, 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 downhill, sweet. Oh no. You know? And then you start right. going again and going again. And it's like, as soon as that business is in your hand, it's so like, so easy to, to drop the prospecting. Cause you're like, I got to work this business. You know, I got to provide for these clients. That's it. And I think that's the thing. Agency owners kind of get run to that, that same thing where, you know, I got to get this, I got to get this. And then at some point you get all these clients, you get happy. Woo. I made some money. And then the prospecting farts falls off. And two months later, one person, you know, one client's, you know, parent dies, they have a car emergency and you know, whatever happens, life happens and you're the first to go. Yeah. You're, you're quick to go <laughs> on that list. So they're like, all right, I'll, it's funny. They justify it. Right. I'll find another way. We're going to make money with this and that and the other thing. And so they cut lead generation, which uh, I think it's a big mistake in real estate. And I think it's something that a lot of agents do when money gets tight, right? They cut their lead generation. That's it. It's so it's so backwards. Right. But it is a large investment, right? So it's, it's the largest investment that they should be making into their business. But because it's so large of an investment, typically, it's the first thing to go. First thing to go. Yeah, I, I need to save some money. I need to get my life back in order. Let me get rid of the ads guy. <laughs> yeah, let me get rid of the ads guy who's bringing in my business. He's bringing in my business. Who's fueling my business at this point. But uh, my, my referrals will take care of themselves, hopefully. Right, right. <laughs> so getting a coach helped me as well in that aspect. So how did it, how did it kind of help you uh, getting a coach to, to get off the roller coaster? So, um, like I said, pretty much uh, from A to Z, it's, it's kind of a real lot. We kind of just put it in a nutshell, though, being able to to put the proper steps in place to be able to step away from my business at some point. Because, you know, if I, you know, got in a car accident tomorrow, my, you know, my agency would shut down. At least it would have. So now we're to the point or we're getting to the point where, you know, if I don't show up to work for two or three weeks, we should still uh, still get um uh, Client calls coming in, we should still be, uh, you know, booking appointments, we should still be onboarding, we should still have client success and the, our current customers are happy and, you know, ultimately, the, you know, the, the engine keeps rolling. Yeah. And so kind of we were able to take a step back and document that, you know, everything that we're doing and how we're doing it, kind of get everything that's in your head out, put it on paper so that, you know, you can surround yourself with the right people to help you. Yeah. I mean, one of, one of my favorite phrases is, is flood the boat, just flood the boat. You know, um, hang on one second. We may have just lost connection. I'm trying to see here. If you guys are listening, watching live and you can hear us and you can see us, let me know because in my live, it, it, uh, it just went to the little circle thing. So I'm not sure if we are still going live or, or what just happened there, but, uh, let us know in the comments. Can you see this? Is this working? <laughs> Yeah, let me check and see on, on mine. I'm not seeing it, though. Yeah, I'm not actually watching. And the other one, I should pull that up real quick. Let's see. Um, there's, like I said, there's a 10-second 10, 10 delay. Okay, I can see and I can hear. All right, perfect. So it's working. It just completely dropped off for me on uh, my screen. So cool. Fantastic. <laughs> Where were we? Where were we before I got distracted? Now you know what Shane deals with. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think we were just kind of kind – of, uh, touching base on uh, systems and processes and that, that, that white water. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Um, let's see here. So you and I had talked earlier and we were going to run over a couple of things. Um, client acquisitions, like as you're growing, obviously that has to be a huge focus. So that is, that is the focus. If it's not, you're not growing. There you go. See, like I said, for a real estate agent, it was uh, prospecting. For you, it's it, which was client acquisition, right? Exactly what it is. So, what are you doing currently for client acquisition? How much can you tell us about it? <laughs> so, um, I feel like at this point, a lot of people know, but if you if you don't, um, so we do do quite a bit. Um, we do Facebook ads, we do LinkedIn automation. Uh, we have a, a really awesome referral program, mm -hmm. and those are probably the big three that uh, that we do and we focus on. Well, you said a uh, referral program. Yep. So we got a referral program too. It's like, so your, your clients are bringing you clients. Correct. And we just give them incentive to do so. Okay. How do you do that? Can you share that? Uh, I can't go in, in, into too much detail on that, but basically, okay. just, uh, you know, find something that's valuable, offer it to your clients and, you know, they'll be your biggest fans. 
that's fair that's fair yeah i've seen uh i've seen a couple guys do stuff like that where you know they might offer them um like half off their next month or something like that if they refer anybody right and if they refer more than two people they'll get the month for free um right different things like that and it's like wow like you can really turn your your current customer base into more customers doing that and yeah, the biggest thing is just find out what, you know, what, what your client's pain points are. Find out what works for them. If it's cash flow, give them, you know, give them some money back. If it's, you know, vacation, you can, you know, there's their services where you can give vacations back to them. Yep. What else have I seen uh, people do? Um, That's have- pretty cool. You can give them a vacation back. And actually there's a, there's a program out there. I forget what it's there called. Is, yeah. I, I've seen, I can't think of the name of it either, but I've, I've seen that as a program. Yeah. It's, it's like 40 bucks a month or something like that. And you get, uh, like you can give away vacations and, it, and it's like the stuff where I think the people have to sit through like a timeshare video or something. I don't know, but you can kind of give away vacations, right? Yep. Definitely. Well, then, that's, that's, maybe it's value. Maybe they need more leads, you know, whatever it is, you figure out what <laughs> that is for your, for your client and, you know, give it to them. If you guys are getting referrals out there, let us know hashtag referrals in the comments or, or let us know that you're getting referrals down there. Um, oh, we do have a question. Sweet. So Chris Lombardi. What up, Chris? Individual listing ads, do you ever leave out how many bedrooms the house has to generate more leads? Uh, no, so doing listings, that's probably one of the things that always go into to the ad copy is the is the bedrooms. Um, yeah, we always do bed, bath, uh, maybe square footage. The only thing that kind of will take in and out sometimes is the price point. Okay, so you're putting that in sometimes? Sometimes, so usually we keep it out, but if it's more of an, uh, a higher scale or a luxury, people don't have an idea how much homes cost, so we'll put that in. But if it's not yeah, luxury, it's medium price point, we'll leave that out. That'll cut down on the people that are like, oh, we can't afford that. It, exactly. Yeah, which I, I've got mixed feelings on that because I think there's, uh, there's a point to doing it, right? You are going to get more people that say, I can afford this, I'm curious. But you're also going right. to lose out on potential deals that might not be 600000 but if your agent's okay with working with 300000 it, why not leave it leave it out <laughs> it, it, it depends on who you're working with but yeah in terms of the bedrooms i'll, I'll we always include it yeah no I've, I've pretty much always put bedrooms in but i can see where he's going with it you know trying to keep that uh keep the mystery there keep it alive so that you can get a little bit uh a little bit more interest in it or a little bit more questions maybe some engagement on that on the ad and whatnot um no it makes sense so yeah, growing can... by referral uh growing by you said email uh facebook Facebook. Okay. Facebook and LinkedIn. That's what it was. Okay. So Facebook, are you running ads for your agency? Yeah, we run ads for agency. Have you, have you uh, come up with your acquisition number? Like this is how much I pay to get an ac- a, a client? Uh, I need to, uh, I know how much we pay to get appointments. So right now we're, we're sitting usually around 30, $40 per appointment. Yep. So now I just need to kind of sit down and figure out how much it's costing to get, get them booked on. But, uh, yeah, yeah. well, I mean, it's just take your, uh, your uh, appointment set to close rate. So not exactly. set, to, set to close rate and then divide that. So yeah, sit down and do some math, but so yeah. I don't have math. <laughs> we, we, we can get the number. We can figure it out. <laughs> I like it. I like it. So uh, let's see. Shane says, Hey, my man, Aaron, what is up guys? What's going on, Shane? Uh, Glad you're on there. Glad you're watching. I think Shane is going to pop on a little bit. We'll see. Shane, maybe let us know. Are you going to, are you not? Are you going to, are you not? <laughs> but anyways, so you're doing that and you're also doing LinkedIn. Now, LinkedIn just changed a lot of stuff in December, yeah. November, December. They changed a lot of stuff. So are you still seeing that as uh, really a great place to bring in clients? Uh, so for us, yeah, it's been it's been working great. It almost is working a little bit better. I don't know if you know, I wondered their 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 the effort is elsewhere, but it's been working really well for us. OK. Nice. And, and honestly, uh, you know, just as far as acquisition, it doesn't really matter so much what you do. Just find you one or two things that you're good at and get really good at those. So if that's cold calling, if that's emails, if that's Facebook, LinkedIn, whatever that is, you figure out what you like to do and just take it and run with it. Yeah. And I've been doing a, a few different coaching calls this week because we just launched our, our student program. And so in these calls, you know, that's one of the most common questions that I would say I'm getting in every single call is, you know, what should I do to bring on more clients, right? Um, that's, it's almost the same thing I tell them, right? Is, what do you like to do? Like, if I if I tell you cold calling is the best way to do it, are you going to freak out and not call the, call anybody? <laughs> or are you going to pick up the phone and go? Like, what are you going to do? 
you know, because at the end of the day, it's about conversations. Can you get into those with cold calls? Perfect. Can you get them to them with emails? Great. Facebook ads, LinkedIn, whatever. Like, what are you doing and what are you comfortable with doing a ton of in order to get into enough conversations to close clients? That's it. You know, but that's, it's funny when people ask like, what should I do for, for lead generation? Well, pick one, pick the one that you want to do and we'll help you get there. Right. What would you say is the most, uh, the most common that you find that, uh, that your students, uh, tend to tend to gravitate towards when they get started? Probably lately, it seems like cold calling, honestly, lately it, it seems like cold calling and, uh, a little bit of LinkedIn. I think uh, we're, as real estate marketers, we're in a pretty sweet position where our, our people we're trying to attract, you know, their whole job is to have their information as public as possible. So I'm yeah. glad to see why cold calling really works in, you know, in the real, real estate space. Yeah, see, and that's that's just it. It's like, it's all out there. And we were going over that the other day. Um, oh wait, Shane says, I'm back at the hotel, just trying to get my priorities straight, looking for some whiskey. Okay. Uh, Shane said cold email is another one that's, that's really popular. So uh, LinkedIn and cold email, I would say probably the most popular, but I'm, I've been surprised at how many people have been interested in cold calling lately, you know, um, which I love cold calling. I've been a big fan of cold calling. I haven't done it much for agency because with, with agency, you know, coming from six years in real estate at one of the top teams in the country, I, you know, I had a lot of connections, right? So I didn't have to do a lot of cold calling. Right. Um, your lap. Yeah. But as a, as an agent, I did thousands and thousands and thousands of calls. Um, I loved cold calling, you know, I ran an ISA team. So like, I totally see the value in cold calling. Um, one thing that's interesting that I think people miss is if you have a little bit of a budget, you can get somebody to scrape the data for you, plug it into an auto dialer and just go to town. You know, an auto dialer changes the game when you can call three, three fifty three to 350 people an hour. Oh, that's insane. Oh yeah. It's a, it's a good time. And it's funny because there's a, there's a dialer out there called Mojo and they have what's called a callback message. Okay. So you're dialing with three lines at once and it's called Mojo dialer guys. So you're calling with three lines at once. If any two people pick up, right. If it's one person, you get connected. If two people can connect at the same time, the one who picked up first gets connected to you. The one who picked up second is going to get a message that says something like, uh, hey, you know, I'm trying to reach you real quick about, uh, you know, your real estate business. Let me call you right back. It could say that. Or what I've seen some people do is they'll say, hey, how's it? Yeah, are you, can you, you know what? I, with bad connection, call you back. <laughs> and so the person waits and like you get done with your other call and it automatically calls them back next. Oh yeah. That's, 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 that's insane. That's massive value right there. It's gold, man. It is gold. And that's Mojo dialer for anybody who's interested in that. Um, it's a triple line. It's, it's yeah. Mojo sells.com. It is great for, for making calls. Uh, the, the biggest one that I've run was when I had the ISA team, we were actually running, I think something like 15 lines at once, but we had, you know, we had somebody pick up anytime somebody to answer. Like it was a, a really robust calling system. Yeah. <clears throat> it was a lot of fun. <laughs> that's, that's, that's awesome right there. Yeah. So <clears throat> anyways, what else? We said we we're going to run over um, pricing packages. This is a huge question we get. And I love, I love this one. I'll give you, let's see, we got this one and then struggles of getting started that we were going to cover real quick and then we'll get uh, Dan on. All right. Let's but, do it. I'll take this one first. Okay. Right. It's pricing packages. This is something that I think a lot of people struggle with. And the way that I approach it is what are you comfortable charging? Because if you cannot sell your packages that you're trying to charge for, it doesn't matter what you charge, right? You, you say, okay, this is worth $5,000. I'm going to go sell it for $5,000. Well, fantastic. Like, are you comfortable selling that package at $5,000? No. Okay. Well, you're not going to close any. Most of the time, right? There's probably a few outliers that might close some. Um, you know, if you make enough calls, you'll always close a couple, right? Even a blind squirrel finds a nut once in a while. <laughs> so <laughs> a broken clock is right twice a day. Twice a day. Uh, <laughs> but if you're not comfortable with whatever you're selling, like it's going to be extremely difficult to sell it. 
So when people say like, well, maybe I should charge a little bit more, like I almost err to the side of charge less, like something that you think, okay, this is stupid if they say no, because you are going to have more conviction, more ability to sell that than something that you're like, I don't know if it's really worth that much. It's going to be close, you know, stuff like that. So as far as pricing goes, like usually when people ask, you know, should I start at 1500, 2500 plus ad spend or blah, blah, blah. Like there's so many people talking about how they charge crazy amounts of money. And I don't know who is actually charging crazy amounts of money, but uh, people get it in their head that even as a new marketer, like they need to charge a crazy amount of money. I'm like, there's nothing wrong with charging 500 or a thousand dollars a month plus your ad spend. You know, I mean, what, what's your take on it? So I'm actually in complete agreement. So if you don't have the confidence to, to make a sale for $3,000, $4,000, $5,000, then you're, you're missing out on money. You're leaving money on the table because you're giving these ridiculous price points. Yeah. Now, once you kind of have that credibility, you have that confidence, you have the results to back it up, mm -hmm. then you can probably make those sales of $3,000, $4,000, $5,000. But when you're just getting started, you take those numbers, you throw them around and you won't get any new clients. That's just the reality. 100%. And where did you start with your prices? So I think when we started, um, I think initially I started doing like 1500, 2000, like I was told to do, and I couldn't close the damn deal. <laughs> and so I think one of the things that people forget about, um, especially in this real estate market is that, uh, you know, every marketplace isn't the same. Mm -hmm. Just meaning that, you know, homes in one location might be, you know, 200 K another place, they might be 400 K and another place they're a million dollars. And yeah. so if you're getting started without a lot of credibility, without a lot of results and without a lot of confidence, you walking around asking for you know $3,000 in a 200 uh, medium price point marketplace probably is going to go over too well. Yeah. And so yeah. I think when we started, we were doing, a, or when I started, I was doing paid trials for like 500 bucks. Yeah. I was asking. And I mean, I was getting, I was getting, getting my feet wet. I was getting a chance to you know practice. I was getting results. And then I was also getting confident so I could go to the next person and say, okay, well, they gave me 500 and they actually got, you know, good ROI you give me a thousand and that kind of, just, kind of just built on that confidence, that momentum. And now, you know, we have, you know, enough client testimonials that we can, you know, demand higher prices. Makes sense. So you started small and you worked your way up to what you felt comfortable with. Correct. I now, if, you, if you're an engine in sales and you have the confidence, you know, to, to do it, you know, by all means, you know, ask for it, but your ability to sell it is, you know, probably the most important part. <laughs> Shane, Shane says, uh, charge as much as your client can afford. <laughs> yeah. See, Shane's got a very unique um, way of selling. And, and that's one of the things that we, we talk about inside of the, in the course that we're doing, uh, because he's, he's kind of taken it just to another level. The way he, he waits and, and doesn't have a pricing package as much as like he works with the client on their budget. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, if you're, if, you're, if you're onboarding your sales call correctly, they'll, you know, they should come out and tell you how many deals that they did last year, how many they want to do, what they've done in marketing. Uh, yeah. Pretty, and at that point, you should be able to say, okay, you know, based on this, this volume, they should be able to afford this price. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And that's, and then where this whole thing meets is, can you pitch that price to them or are you not there yet? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right. So um, let's see here. We've got a couple of questions right before we get there. Uh, we'll, we'll get Dan on in just a second here and tell us a little bit about getting started. Cause I think there's a lot of people we've, we just hit 4,000 members. So thank you guys so much for, uh, for joining the group and, and, and watching and joining us in all of our adventures. Uh, but Aaron, talk to us a little bit about getting started because I think there's a lot of people that are still just getting started in this niche. Like what are some of the challenges you faced and how did you get past those? So I think uh, when, when I got started, the biggest thing is it's kind of just the, the reoccurring problem that you're running the agency as a whole is getting clients. And so when you're getting started, you don't have those testimonials. You don't have that confidence. Usually you don't have, uh, I guess, all the resources you need to, to get them. Right. And so I think that's usually the biggest struggle that people uh, they deal with. Um, and so in terms of how to combat that, I know we gave it away for that in that guide for Christmas, but I'm a, a firm believer just because how I got started. It start at your local at your local level. So wherever you live at your local marketplace, start uh, reaching out to agents there where you can actually take them out to coffee, sit down with them, shake hands, put a name with a face, and those deals will be a whole lot easier to close. Love it. I love, and that is that what you did when you first started? That's exactly what I did when I first started. Uh, I cold called an agent um, in my marketplace. I did an open house walk in. Um, got a client that way. When you say when you say marketplace, uh, what do you mean? Because like marketplace, it sounds funny because it's uh, it's kind of a Keller Williams term from what I've right. heard. I don't know. 
that may be why I, why I say it so much. But okay, so okay. in a more more lamest term, so the start your season. Uh, I'm not, but okay. I'm spent a lot of time in the Kelly Williams offices. <laughs> okay, okay, that's I was wondering when you said marketplace. I'm like, that sounds really Williamsy. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, start start in your city. Start wherever your you know your town, your neighborhood, where you're comfortable at. You know, it's not too hard to find a real estate office. It's Love also it. not too hard to you know go on Zillow and find agents near you. It's not too hard to you know drive around a neighborhood and see an open house sign and stop by to get more information. Yeah, and you know what? On top of that, there's there's um, you know, I was talking to somebody the other day, they're talking about cold calling Zillow agents and basically um, calling the ones who have 20 sales or more in the last 12 months. And we were like, yeah, that's that's a great idea. But let me show you something. And I went through a couple different agents and I found one where they had zero sales in the last 12 months. I said, this doesn't sound right. You know, they got 42 reviews. Makes no sense. Yeah, they get so, off Zillow. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They stopped paying Zillow is what happened. So I, and I told them, I'm like, you call every agent on Zillow. You don't just call the ones who are showing sales, right? Because when we looked at it, turns out this team, from what we could tell, they were doing probably somewhere between 30 and 40 million a year out in California. But going off of just the people with recent sales, you wouldn't know that. So I always tell people like, go off of everybody in Zillow. Go off of everybody in realtor.com. You know, yeah, I mean, when you're first getting started, you know, you really can't be picky. Just call everybody and somebody will pick up and say, yeah. Yeah. Last question on this. How important was that, that testimonial for you? So doing, starting at the local level, it really wasn't that important because you didn't really have it. So starting local, they're, they're buying you. So as long mm -hmm. as you present yourself well, you seem halfway decent, like a halfway decent human being. And you, you know, act like you know what you're talking about. Most people will give you a chance. I love it. I love it. Because I think that's something a lot of us struggle with is we don't have a testimonial. And so we're like, oh, what do we do? And next thing you know, it's three months later and we, we haven't gone out and gotten clients or even attempted to do so because we're so focused on that that testimonial. Yeah, get get your ass up and get your boots <laughs> on the ground and you'll you'll get one. But you know, you gotta be you gotta be, you know, gotta want it. Yeah, exactly. And if you guys want more details on on uh, Aaron's method, you can easily just look up uh, his last Whiskey Thursday where he went over a, a lot more details on what you were doing, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> so let's get, uh, let's get Dan in here and, and you can co-host with me. We won't drill you so much. <laughs> so let's Dan. what's that? So let's drill Dan. There you go. There you go. So Dan, uh, Dan was actually a, oh, there he is. Look at that. He was ready to go. Dan, what's going on? Okay. Now he's right side up. <laughs> can you hear us now, Dan? Yeah, what's going on, man? I'm using my uh, my phone to make sure I get stuck with good internet connection. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. So, Dan, you're, you're a podcaster, a blogger. You're the founder of Stealth Media Group and a founder of Facebook Marketing for loan officers and real estate agents that has over 4,000 members of just real estate agents and LLs. Is that right? Yep. That is long story short, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's what I told you. I'm like, hey, give me background real quick <laughs> so we can we can go over it. So, um, tell us a little bit more about yourself and then let's jump into some of these questions. You can answer them with us. Yeah, no, totally. Yeah. So basically guys, I started about two years ago in the internet space, started actually with a podcast when I was in college called dorm rooms, and conference rooms, um, dorm room, what dorm rooms to conference rooms. Okay. So like, cause my co-host was also in college as well. Yeah. So it was kind of like that bridging of the gap, another entrepreneur based podcast, but with like college kids. So yeah. I just thought it'd be fun, different, whatever. And um, basically what happened was is from that, I interviewed uh, who was eventually my business partner uh, on our show. And we decided to start an agency together. And what do we dive into right away besides real estate agents? Because we were like, these are the most accessible people that we can find. And it's mm -hmm. even more funny because you guys just got done talking about the Zillow deal and I'm going to give you like a little bit of background, how we kind of landed our first clients using Zillow. We actually, um, I was in college. I played college across, had classes, all this crap, right? So at night, I used to actually take a list of 50 Zillow agents and in between class or during class, I'd be texting them, trying to hop on appointments with them by sending out kind of like a baby type text. Like, Hey, I want to send over a couple buyer leads. Do you need help with that stuff? So I was trying to just send them different types of leads, different stuff like that. And that's really how I got started with it all. So it's nice. kind of a little bit of a cool background story. Awesome. Love it. Nice. Aaron, uh, do you have the, the questions up? 
let's see here. I, I think we've gotten all the way. Let's see. Uh, actually, we we're down at Nicholas uh, Bello or Bellio. Nick, I'm not 100% sure how to pronounce your name, but it looks cool. So biggest problem, actually, growing my ISA team. We're closing too many clients too fast. Um, it's a good problem to have. Again, it goes back to that statement. Flood the boat. Flood the boat and figure it out. You know? Um, let's see here. Can hear and see still live? Can hear and see? Dan, you let us know. You could hear and see us. <laughs> yeah. Um, for, yeah. So, David, best way to do it, grow by referral. You can add $5,000 a month. Easy. Best way to do it is get referrals with no money paid. Yeah, 100% agree. If you can uh, if you can get referrals without having to give them a free month and stuff like that, more power to you. Uh, <laughs> so let's see here. And if, if you guys are watching right now, hashtag live in the comments below, hashtag replay if you're watching the replay, smash the like button, the heart button, the, the laugh button. We need some more emojis. I'm not seeing emojis. I feel like emojis today. Anybody else game for emojis? <laughs> so... Let's see here. Cold emailing. Got to get that triple line dialer. Yes, David. You absolutely do. It's amazing. Uh, okay. Um, Matt with the facts. It's okay to start low, get up ego out and get paid for your time so you can pay the bills. You can always fire them and upsell them later. Send them referrals, charge them. Okay. So, okay, here we go. Right below that one. Do you see it by uh, Nick? Oh uh, yeah. What are your thoughts on and see? I'll be right back. Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. So uh, Nick asks, you know, what are your thoughts on your lead gen agency and you're generating mostly all your leads from Facebook, but you're not able to pick up your customers in this way. You have to do cold calls to get your clients. I don't know if I'm clear. Dan, does that, is that making sense to you? One second. I'm trying to find it. Say that again out loud really quick. Okay. So Nick asks, what are your thoughts? So you're a lead gen uh, agency and you're generating most of your leads from Facebook but you are not able to pick up your customers this way. So it sounds like you're getting leads from Facebook, but you're not getting clients is how I, how I interpret that. Yeah, that's exactly what I think he's saying. Yeah, I mean, so the for me personally, it's because I didn't have a budget specifically and I still really don't. I'm not as big as Aaron is. Like, man, like Aaron has crushed it over the last year. Him and I were in some groups together and I saw him just skyrocket, right? Like I don't have that type of budget just yet set aside. So um, really what I've been able to dive into is that I needed to do other ways that were means that were cheaper to me, frankly. Right. So that's why I've been doing what I do. I didn't have the budgets because appointment costs across the board. When I talk to everybody in different types of spaces, uh, even if it's real estate or medical or whatever, is it costs like $80 an appointment. I wasn't confident that I could close yet. So I needed to go into cheaper routes to make sure that I could still scale. And you just got to bootstrap it sometimes. I don't know if that makes sense, but that's that kind of why that I did it my way. Nah, that makes perfect sense. And I'm kind of a, kind of the same way. Um, it, it was a while before we actually started diving into the paid ads only because, uh, you know, appointment cost is high. And so with having those high appointment costs, if you don't have the, your ability to sell and your ability to close on those deals, then, you know, ultimately you're wasting money. And so there's a lot of other, um, I guess, uh, bootstrap approaches, whether that's cold calling, whether that's email, whether that's automation, whether that's referrals, you know, whatever that is, and it kind of just goes back to finding what works best for you. And then once you get that confidence, you get those exactly. testimonials, then think, you dive into the ads. And exactly. Like I have a few of those testimonials now that like I'm looking and saving a side of a separate budget just to specifically use. Whoa. What's up, Shane? What's <laughs> up? Look who decided to show up. He's like, what? Aaron's answering these questions. I will not be upstaged. Give me a minute. <laughs> Hold my whiskey. <laughs> Love it. But um, no, like, yeah. What I'm saving a budget right hey. now, Aaron to actually scale into doing some of the paid side and stuff like that. But it was mainly, like you said, it was, it was the confidence factor and having the money to actually push into it. Love it. Definitely. Shane, you want to add something to that? What up, Shane? Hey, what's going on, guys? How y'all doing? Doing good, man. How are you, buddy? Oh, I'm so tired. <laughs> oh, you're the sun. Well, look at that sun rays on you. Oh, my God. Yeah, I got, I was up like, well, Matt and I were on the phone last night till probably one in the morning. At one or two. <laughs> one, yeah, something like that. And then I was up at six o'clock to go to a to go to Disney. <laughs> so and I've been at yeah, Disney. Yeah, you didn't bring me to Disney, so it's all right. No. <laughs> so I've been at Disney all <laughs> Dan, day. Are you in Florida? 
No, but it's my birthday too, so I figured he'd take me to Disney too. But it's happy fine. birthday, Dan. We forgot. It's Dan's birthday today. Happy hey, birthday, Dan. Birthday, Dan. Thanks, big guy. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's been a it's been a very, very long day. We just uh, just got back to the hotel. So you figure out when I'm coming down for dinner? No, I haven't figured that out yet. We'll talk after. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, um, uh, Aaron, did you get to Shane's comment about his first client? He charged two hundred and fifty dollars. Scaled to five uh, k in under three months. Nope, we didn't get down that far. Yeah, so I think we were just answering uh, Nicholas's uh, question. I don't know if you guys wrapped that up or not, but just, yeah, I think we were just wrapping that one up. And smash the like button, and the heart button, and the laugh button, and the wow button, and whatever button you want to smash, but smash it, please, and uh, comment whether or not you're having. So I think just to get back to Nicholas's question, I think his, uh, and I think you guys kind of answered this, or Dana answered this correctly. Uh, but his his question is more clients questioning you as to why are you not generating Facebook leads and why you're telling us it's the best method to get clients. And so I think that's um, that's his question, right? Uh, and I think, yeah. uh, Dan, you kind of answered that correctly. And I think a lot of us, you know, when I first started, I did Facebook ads um, to get trial clients. I did some to get appointments. Dan, you know, obviously costs more money, you know, in your case, 80 bucks, uh, you know, an appointment. Some of us are getting appointments at $30. Uh, and then some of us are just, you know, like we're, we're doing referral. We've got, you know, we're doing numerous things, you know, LinkedIn referrals, all kinds of different methods to try bring in leads. I think with the real estate, the reality is that generating leads for real estate is so much cheaper. Right. And it's just a good way. It's, it's just a good way to bring in a lot of leads and fill up a pipeline. It doesn't stop the clients from cold calling. It doesn't stop them from door knocking or doing any other method that they're, they're doing or, you know, paying for any other lead sources. It's just the method that we're providing. Yeah. And I think another way to handle that is uh, if you're, well, a lot of us are running, you know, a client acquisition ad on Facebook for at least five bucks a day at the very least to see what happens to get our name out there. Right. We're running some things most of the time. So when somebody says, you know, you're generating most of your leads for, you're a lead, lead gen agency and generating mostly all your leads from Facebook, but you're not able to pick up your customers in this way. So if you're running ads on Facebook, I would say, actually, I am running the ads on Facebook. However, that's not the only method I use to get clients. And this is not the only method I recommend that you use to get clients, right? That is, that's one way to handle it. Uh, the other option is that, you know, real estate agents are often out there trying to figure out how to get clients so they're not on Facebook. <laughs> so that's why I'm reaching out to you this way. You know, um, there's, there's so many different ways to handle it. It's it really, it's just an objection for something else. And you got to uncover what that is. That's at the end of the day, what, what that typically is. Did we, uh, did we properly introduce Dan? I didn't hear. Oh, we did. Oh, yeah, cool. Yeah, cool. Yeah, he he backstory, he got a whole group, he gave us everything. Oh, yeah, he did. Okay. I, 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 like I re I read it. I read the whole thing. I was like, this is Dan Team. Okay. I sent him a nice little blurb. I just took it straight from my personal website and just here you go. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Like you I went I went back to my uh my hosting comedy night days. I'm like, give me your uh give me your bio so I can get up there and read that real fast. <laughs> You're like, I just didn't send you the I should have just sent you the link on my website that I send to all the podcast people. I just go, here you go if you need it. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. But let's go back to this one, Shane, because you said you charge 250 a month, scaled to 5K in under three months. And this is kind of what we were just talking about, right? Is is what to charge a client. And it's something that we hear so commonly, you know, how should I price my services? How should I price my packages? Like you took on a client for $250 a month. Most people would tell you you're stupid. Yeah. Um, 5K in under three months, most people would be like, how did you do that? <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, this just kind of goes back to um, addressing immediate needs, right? So uh, in a lot of cases, you know, when, you know, we talk to like some of our students and, you know, coaching calls and things like that, what ends up happening is people are going out there and they're pitching, you know, Facebook lead generation, right? Um, and so if you run into a client that doesn't actually want lead generation and they want to have their Facebook page, you know, fixed, or they want to get 10,000 likes on their Facebook page, or they have a website that's not working, or they have another problem. And that's the immediate problem right now. Forget trying to sell them on Facebook leads, right? 
and I think we, we all need to become a solutions provider as opposed to a lead generation provider. Mm -hmm. And when you can do that and capture those immediate opportunities, then that allows you to build relationships and trust. Um, yeah, go ahead, Dan. Yeah. So basically what I've started to thank you for raising to, your hand, by the way, I'm like, I'm like, like, I'm like, I'm like that. Nuss bomb last week, just diving in there. You know, I'm a little bit more, more relaxed right now, but we'll see what happens. So anyway, so, um, what what I started to do too is I started to find different ways where like these guys need help too. They're not always the best on the phones. And you might be thinking that like, oh, they're real estate agents. They know how to talk on the phone. Like a lot of times they don't. So I've given people scripts. I've re helped written up scripts. I bought your guys scripts. I, uh, you know, and everything. What right? you thinking so, like, They're good. They're, they, they're, they're literally what people need. Like they, these guys just need help. Even the mortgage ones and stuff like that. Like I work with more mortgage guys than I do real estate guys, but what I started to realize is that they just don't have all around like certain systems in place. And I tried to be more than just a lead generation guy at the end of the day, as soon as we're just lead generation, people were commodities, right? So how do we become more than just commodities? I built out courses for their, like I work with just like Nussbaum. I switched from real estate into med spa, which is funny, but with Zach, like I, I know Zach does this a little bit too, but I built out full courses that I give that spa and make their front desk go through it because they need to learn how to sell. So you just got to find different ways. I know people who built out full courses for their, uh, for their mortgage people or for their real estate people. And literally they just based off this book, the conversion code, yeah. like, literally the guy who wrote this is from Quicken loans. And I based my whole course and everything from it directly off from the conversion code. I don't even know if you could see it with the ring light that I have going on, but mine's it's, in the room. Uh, I was just, I was just like, wait, do I have mine right here? I think it's in the other room. My, uh, mine's in my bag. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I thought it was really good. Um, I literally skip to the second section of this book because the first section is all about like Facebook ads or something like that. And the second section and third section, it only equates to 80 pages. So it's only 80 pages that you got to get through. I picked this up from the local library because I didn't want to buy another book. I could turn the bookshelves in like, I just need. <laughs> you rented it at the, at the local block <laughs> library? Yeah, I was at the library. I was like, I need the conversion code. I was like, I'm not, I don't want to go out and buy another book. Like, I just so, I got tired and sick of just buying book after book. I'm like, I'm going to go and just go into the library one day and see if they got it. And this yeah. is, I built a full course directly from this book. I love it. I don't know. I love it. What's <laughs> his name? Uh, Chris, uh, gosh, what is his name? The guy who wrote it, Chris. Oh, Chris, uh, Chris Smith. You Chris really, Smith. really? Yep. Just the most basic white person name there is, Chris Smith. <laughs> <laughs> like, there you go. <laughs> so Chris Smith, but yeah, he, he does a really good job in there. And he, did we piss him off? <laughs> I think Shane's gone. He had to go back up to Canada, man. He'll, he'll come back. He'll come back. <laughs> Guys, smash the like button, smash the heart button, and the laugh and the wow and all that fun stuff, except for the angry button. Well, I guess you can smash the angry button if you don't like us, but uh smash something so that shane will get back <laughs> you scared him off no worries no worries uh aaron have you gone through the conversion code i actually have not i'm sitting here thinking like man i gotta get that book <laughs> that's a great book on conversion um dan have you read millionaire real estate agent no okay. i've read, read that one Gary keller yeah yep i've read that one that i would say as a as somebody who works with real estate agents you should read the millionaire real estate agent book. It's the red book. If you're familiar with KW, but it's called the millionaire real estate agent. Amazing book. If you work with real estate agents and you want to know how they think, like, there you go. Like that's the plan that they're trying to get through. Right. At least how they should think. <laughs> What's that? I say at least how they should think. There you go. Exactly. Right. <laughs> and if they don't yet, uh, send them a copy of the red book. It's like 20 bucks. <laughs> exactly. So, um, the other one is, uh, the one thing is another amazing book by those guys. I think it was uh, Jay Papazon, uh, who is one of the writers for Millionaire Real Estate Agent. But that you can use if you're an agency owner, if you're a real estate agent, doesn't matter. So Joe says the difference between a client for an agent and a client for a marketer is completely different. 100% agree. 100% agree. <laughs> uh, Chris, what's going on, man? Joe says, happy birthday, Dan. Uh, Aaron Thanks. says, <laughs> Aaron says a lot of agents can't talk on the phone. It's true. Well, they can, they just can't use the words in the proper order or syntax. Uh, <laughs> Aaron says, I train a few agents, trust me, they're scared to death of the phone. I know. 
What's that? You guys have a great fix for you guys have a great fix for that problem, I hear. What, what which I one is that? It. The, the uh, mini the, course? You can't talk on the phone, so you just gotta get the yeah, just get the whatever the the, the I can't even think the script. The conversion uh, mini course me. master class, whatever we're calling it these days. But yeah, I mean that yeah, honestly it'll it'll fix it'll fix that problem. <laughs> yeah, it, it's pretty beast. Um, Shane's here twice. Shane, you are you are literally here twice. Let me kick your other version of Shane and see if you can rejoin now. Uh, <laughs> we have we have five people here, but we actually have four. So hang on. <laughs> That's me because I joined twice. I'm trying to kick the old you. Sorry. Uh, let's I see. lost the internet. I, I have no... I, I can't get on the we'll Wi-Fi. Just the non-video participants. Anyways, getting back to it. So uh, Aaron says, I trained a few agents. Trust me, they're scared to death of the phone. Aaron, do you want to go through some of these other questions or comments and questions with uh, starting with, let's see, Jimmy Yuzi? Uh, let's see here. So Jimmy says, I'm learning social media marketing and part-time valet with a loan officer. He's new and doesn't make any money. Should I not work with him? <laughs> <laughs> Dan, you want to answer that question? Wait, ask that again. Wait, say that again. I can't <laughs> find it. So Jimmy uh, said that he's learning social media marketing and oh. works part-time and work and work part-time valet with a loan officer. So I think he's saying that the loan officer is new and doesn't make any money. And he's trying to figure out how he should work with this particular uh, loan officer. Yeah, no, don't don't work with him, man. If he's still working part time and as a loan officer, it's, you're going to send him people and he's going to be at his job. It's just not going to go over well. You're better off going find someone else. That's my two cents. <laughs> Matt, you got something to add to that? Yeah, I mean, if if, if the client has no way to pay you, um, it's it's not a charity. If you need a testimonial and, and it's somebody you know and you're going to get a testimonial out of it, maybe. But other than for the reason of a, a short trial with a testimonial, probably not. Shane. I ran into that. I ran into that issue working with the single agents and stuff like that. You know, saying like, "Yeah, let's do this, let's do this," and then after a week, you figure out that like, they actually don't have money and they're freaking out, man. Yeah, <laughs> they're freaking out. Yeah, well, and and that's one of the questions I ask people. You know, before I work with them, uh, is is not can you afford this for a month? It's can you afford this for four to five months before we start seeing results? Yeah, that's because, it. Because yeah, I've had plenty of clients that will get a deal you know, under contract in two weeks. And you're like, fantastic. You, you know, you're not the normal, right? <laughs> you're the exception, not the rule. Exactly. But that's often the, the misconception that they have is that like, I'm going to, I'm going to start working with you. I'm going to have clients in two weeks. No, you're going to have people to contact in two weeks. Number one, you got to see, can you convert them? Number two, can you get referrals out of them if you can't convert those? I mean, that's something that a lot of people miss is that you can get referrals from your leads. They one lead is not just one lead. One lead could be like 16 leads. I literally had a client actually call me up. So we probably did six months together. And then she went MIA, called mm -hmm. me back first of the year. Because uh, when she left, she said she was going to try something else. Mind you, has been working. So anyway, she came back and she was saying that, hey, you know, I want to get back started uh, first of February. Um, and I need, I need to get those leads you were, you were giving me before. And, you know, another thing is a lot of those leads that you gave me, I actually got referrals from those leads. I'm like, ah, you get it. Welcome back. Now I got to charge you. <laughs> there you go. Like you've seen, you, you've taken the red, was the red pill, the blue pill. You took one of them. The, the one you're supposed to take to see the other side, right? <laughs> right. Take it yeah, out. And I think, I, I think a lot of um, and, and marketers may just not know this. Um, and a lot of agents, I think, forget this, that they're a lead that's actually converted into a customer is worth anywhere between six to seven times the first commission. And, uh, and that's, you know, for a number of different reasons. One is because there's a high likelihood that they'll buy or sell another house with you. Um, not just once, but, you know, two or three times. Um, and then all the referrals, friends and family. Um, so if you maintain that database over a long period of time, uh, there's a good chance that you could, you know, you can multiply that original commission. So a lot of times when we work with clients, we try to identify what uh, the long-term values of a client. Uh, we basically use, you know, an average commission and we multiply that by six and that's typically the, their, you know, their long-term value. Yeah. And once clients get that, um, and I've had a lot of clients get, you know, 
random referrals, even referrals from the email drips, uh, where like we ended up getting two of them just recently, uh, where one of them was an ex-husband that was looking for a house for his ex-wife. <laughs> and he's like, can you help her out? And we did. Uh, and then um, another one was uh, a friend of the family's that was uh, moving to the city and they had no idea who else to call and they've been getting emails for the past uh, three months and we ended up getting the referral. So um, it does happen. The problem is, is that, you know, if clients don't stick around long enough, they don't see these benefits. Uh, so, you know, when they're only sticking around for two months, well, of course, you're not going to start seeing referrals out of those leads. Uh, and, uh, but after four or five, six months and you keep working those leads and then after two, three, four years of working your database, then you start seeing a lot of referrals start coming through from those clients. Agreed. All right. So, um, the next question is from David. And so this actually is to you, Shane. So David asked, um, David is there I need to know who David who's oh, I know. Who oh, David Torrance. <laughs> okay. Can you answer his questions? uh okay just tonight though <laughs> right right <laughs> all right so he wants to know is there a canadian equivalent of was that Sp Sp spaghetto all right he says oh, i have a list yeah, of yeah. addresses and want to find phone numbers he, he, but he sent me, yeah he sent me a message i never responded i've been sorry <laughs> sorry buddy get, i i've been traveling what's that we need to get tyler on soon tyler runs cole realty resource and he can I don't know what they can do in Canada. I know in the U.S., like you give them uh, a, an address and they'll give you like every name and number and email within two miles of that address. Right. <laughs> so uh, we need to get him on because he does have some cool deals coming up. Let's do it. But in the meantime, <laughs> uh, uh, answer is I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. I wish Sorry. I knew. It's not a service that I, I need. But <laughs> Sorry, uh, David. I told you to ask Shane. My bad. <laughs> Uh, I, I don't know, and I, I would be very surprised if there is um, privacy policies here, and, and the laws here are very, very different. Uh, so, you know, but but I can't tell you if there is or not. Makes sense. All right. So, uh, is that something I should know? <laughs> I feel like now it's something I should know. Jane, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> So it looks like Wes Bale says that he'd love it if you guys would rip the audio from these lives and put them on our Apple podcast. <laughs> Something you got to think about doing? Actually, yeah, we have been talking about doing that. Um, we're in talks of getting this whole thing put into a podcast. I mean, if you're if you're watching right now, would you be interested in a podcast? Is it, is it just Wes or would everybody be interested in that podcast? So they're all, the majority, like everything we've had, the past 17 episodes of this have been, have been uploaded to YouTube. So they're on our YouTube channel. Um, it's all there. We have been talking about ripping the audio out, um, possibly even just throwing it up onto SoundCloud, which would be really, really easy for us to do. Uh, it's just take, you know, it's a matter of time and, you know, just getting it done and priorities and, uh, you know. Yeah. No, making, making money on the side <laughs> while doing all these other things. Yeah, I mean, we still have clients, right? <laughs> exactly. It's a big, Wait, can, it's a can big I ask, client. Can I, can I ask Shane a question? Yeah, yeah. sure. Jane, Wait, are, did you, are you raise you your hand? The... No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Jane, <laughs> are, you from the, are you from the trailer park, boys? Why? Because you're, you know, all about a bop, blood. Uh, all yeah, about yeah. what? You just, I just love the way you guys say about. I love when I see my friend in Winnipeg. Oh my God, it's so much fun. I think about, the whole time. About, yeah. <laughs> that was probably the first conversation Shane and I ever had. I literally go, I have a friend who lives in Canada. Where about? He goes, Bud, do you know how far away that is from me? <laughs> I was like, yeah, I figured it would be like right there. You guys are Canada. It's the same thing. Highway one. <laughs> Amer Americans think this country is so small. <laughs> I like, no, no, no. I've been there. And I remember leaving like Toronto headed north and going, I haven't seen anything in hours. It just goes. <laughs> it's so, like it's yeah, it's freaking huge. So the, I, when I was in when I was in Florida a few years ago, we ended up at uh, the county hospital, and the nurse there, like every nurse that we ran into, you know, every time we said we were Canadian, we we figured out first of all if we said we were Canadian, we get much better service. That was the first <laughs> thing we figured out. It was like, crazy. Well, America's great. Hang on a sec. <laughs> yeah, like so we walk into county like to this county hospital. And first thing I asked, I'm like, you know, how long is this, like, how long was the wait? 
because in Canada, like you, you usually have signs up and it says like wait time, you know, an hour, wait time, 45 minutes. Like when you walk into the ERs, right? So I walked into this one ER and there's like 300 people in the ER. And so I go up to the front desk. I'm like, you know, how long is the wait? And she's like, look around. <laughs> that's, what, that's what she answers. It, it depends how many more bleeders come in. <laughs> it's like, look around. Okay, so I looked around and I was just like, oh my God. So she's like, okay, well, what are you here for? So I, I registered my son because he had broken his arm. And uh, she's like, can you have, can I have your address? I gave her the address. On the, she's like, what's your zip code? I'm like, we don't have a postal code. She's like, oh, you're from Canada. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, and that changed everything. <laughs> so like, I didn't even have time to sit down in the ER and then her name got called out. And here, like I'm walking by, like, you know, the single father with seven kids that's in there. I've got these, like these old people that are half dying. You know, they're all waiting. They've probably been waiting for five hours in the ER. And here we are walking by all these people. But I remember like in the waiting, the next waiting room we went into, the two nurses came up. It's like, oh, we heard we're from Canada. She's like, oh, you know, I, I know this person from this town starts with an M. Do you know where that is? I'm like, are you <laughs> <laughs> It's the best. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm like, okay, well, the only like town that I can think of that anybody else would know would be Montreal, right? So, <laughs> right. Yeah. So. <laughs> All of the, Brit the Brits, the British Canadians. <laughs> oh my gosh. I love it. Anyways, I love it. All right. I guess back to questions, right? We did yeah. get a lot of people that said they would listen. Yes, please. The podcast. What do we do? We call it podcast whiskey Thursdays. I feel like it has to say something about real estate marketing. I'm hey, not Joe, sure. by the, Joe, Joe Giselle, dude, I love Letter Kenny. It's the best show in the world, by the way. You guys never seen Letter Kenny before? Look it up. That is my college career. So just yeah, it's a great, <laughs> it's a great show, guys. I'll check it's it great. out. We'll, we'll have to check that out. You have to message it to me so I remember. Check it out. Um, let's see here. Where are we at? Uh, I think Ricky had a question. He said, uh, what do you guys think about free trials? If so, how long? Uh, you see that? Uh, Ricky, to was that Torres? Yep. <clears throat> Let's let Dan answer. Yeah, Dan, what do you think about so, free trials? In real estate, I did one free trial out of the whole time. The rest, I just got Are away you, from it. Have you finished it yet? <laughs> <laughs> It got finished as soon as I asked for two grand afterwards. <laughs> so uh, in real estate, I did one free trial. did not work out too well. And it's not the fact that we didn't generate leads. It's the fact that these leads are so far out, like Aaron alluded to earlier when we were talking, that it was just so hard for them to see the long-term vision of it that when I turned around, it was like, hey, can we, you owe 1500 2000 bucks, whatever I said. And she was like, this isn't going to work. And I didn't at that point understand what I was getting myself into. And then that's when I completely switched. Like, I need to close these people, like, right away. I was able to use that as a case study, but I was just like, we need to close and really set expectations that, like, hey, this is how this typically works out, just so you know ahead of time and all this other mm -hmm. kinds of stuff. Um, that's how I did one free trial. And then the, the niche I'm in now, medical spas, I did some free trials, but the, it's, it's a lot quicker turnaround. Um, so, yeah, so I don't do free trials anymore. I stopped that. And then in real estate, I... I'd advise against it if, unless it's once again, one of your first clients and you just need some stats and statistics that you would feel more comfortable about. It's really just like, what's your comfortability? If you're comfortable going straight in for the close, do it. If you need one or two trials under your belt, just to put that within your, you know, in your hammer or whatever, and you could take it out and you can use it to talk about in your sales calls, then do that. I mean, I think like we always talk about guys, like it's really based off of what you need to make yourself feel as comfortable as possible doing this stuff and that's something that i learned you know two years ago thank god you know while i was in college um and then even when i took a full-time job at yelp too so i actually did my first full year by the way guys was march of 2018 i'm going on my first full year on my own completely i was working at yelp before i did this after i graduated college um but yeah at the end of the day if, if whatever you need to do to feel comfortable but i would not suggest going over to that's my personal view makes sense makes sense uh, what do you say to that matt so you worked at Yelp, like, uh, was that the whole blackmailing thing or what were you just doing there? <laughs> yeah, basically I was funny because you earlier when I was an on yet, you talked about how you made thousands of phone calls. I did over, I worked at Yelp for eight months and in an eight month time span, I equated my numbers just on an average rate that I probably did 17,000 phone calls in the matter of cold 
And these guys are like, they tell you they're not cold calls. These guys are fucking cold because either they hate Yelp or you have no idea where you are. Because when you start out, you're calling in the middle of freaking nowhere. <laughs> so, uh, so talk about getting used to the phone. Yeah, it was, uh, yeah, that was something else. That, that's a whole other topic if people want to dive into how Yelp actually works. <laughs> oh, crazy. So let's see. What other questions do we have, Aaron? Did that answer the question? I hope, by the way. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, you. You know, do one if you have two, not more than two. And yeah, set proper expectations when, uh, when doing so. Aaron did, Aaron, did you do one before? Did you ever so do when, a uh, Yeah. So when, when I got started, I did one as well. And then and, um, I did get a testimony from it. So that was good. But it didn't translate into a, a paid uh, client. And so then what we started doing was... Um, <clears throat> pretty much doing a uh, paid trials. So they may not pay the full amount, they are paying something. So, and also found that they seem to value the leads a little bit more when they had to pay for them, right? Versus, you know, I'll call them in, you know, 24, 48 hours once the lead comes in. Oh yeah, let me rephrase that. I did a paid a pay trial in a sense that they paid just for the Facebook ad spend. Some people really get confused like on the free trial, do I pay for it or whatever? I did, I always made people, if I was ever doing a trial, they pay the ad spend. So let me, let me put that out there. Yeah. So <laughs> like, I'm the only one that does anything different. <laughs> it's like, so I did 11 page, 11 trials when I first started. Um, not just two, I did 11. Uh, I think the biggest problem with trials, um, especially with people that are first starting out is the expectation of what the trial is going to turn into, especially yeah. in the real estate niche. Right. Yeah. Um, it's like of, it's like putting your dating expectations out there on the first date like it's uncomfortable but you better <laughs> do it or you're gonna end up dating somebody that doesn't matter exactly and so, would you agree with that Shane yeah no for sure and and <laughs> I you know when I first got into this um you know the people I was learning from were like okay you go out you know do a trial get get a success story you know, and success, meaning you're getting results, you're getting leads, you're converting them into something, right? What I didn't understand is that in real estate, nothing converts in that trial. Uh, you've got to get really, really lucky for something to actually convert. And, uh, and so, you know, as I was doing these trials and, you know, clients were getting frustrated, they were getting a lot of leads, but, you know, obviously nothing was converting. So, you know, it's really important to, to set those expectations and, and your success factors of your trials can't be results. Um, so typically whenever, you know, I'm working with somebody that is asking about trials, um, if they're just getting started in this, uh, you know, the trial, the success of the trial should really depend on whether or not you can generate leads in a specific market. And that is it not, can you actually generate results? Right now, did you so, ever, did you ever ask, this was one question I did ask actually, as I switched niches, I did trials for a little bit in the medical, but I started to ask the question. What do you determine? Because I would say if we determine this as a success, we would like to keep moving forward. And then you would say, okay, I go, but here's my question for you. What do you determine as a success for a little trial over the course of one week? And yeah. that changed everything. They're like, well, as long as we get a couple of conversations going or we get at least one response, that'd be better than I ever had with any other marketer, right? So that's kind of where I was just like, what is their expectations? If their expectation was just like super low that like, hey, I just want to talk to one person all right, cool. This, this could work out. Right. But if their expectations are like, I expect to close three deals in, in seven days, right from the get go, either a, you got to just push back like a bull or you just gotta be like, this is not going to work out. I'm just going to save you and I some time. Yeah. There's like money out there. at the end of the day. That was the biggest realization I had actually is this whole game. And this is kind of like talking from a broader perspective is there's money out there. Like there's money. You could say no to deals. Like it's, if it's not going to make sense, it's going to waste your time. You could say no. And I think people really misconceptualize that we need to just keep chasing the first dollar that comes at our face. Like you could say no to a deal if it's not going to make sense. That's like right. I've done that before. Like if he didn't have money, I started saying, never mind, let's not do this. Cause it's not yeah, gonna work. exactly. So, and the other side know. of that too, is that like, there's no set rule out there. So if we go back to the pricing structures, there's no set rule that says you have to charge $1,500 or 2,500 or 3,500. You know, I've done a lot of deals at 500 bucks in the first month because I wanted the opportunity. It was just such a much, like a much, much bigger opportunity 
that I just wanted to start building a relationship with the client. So sure, I'll work for a little bit less. I know I'm, I, I, you know, I, I value my time. It has nothing to do with whether or not I'm valuing my time or whatever. It's the same way that we used to do when we were, you know, competing against, you know, Dell, like when I used to sell equipment, we're competing against Dell and, and IBM and we're trying, we're pushing, you know, compact product into a million dollar company. Uh, like you're, you're cutting deals left, right, and center. So you can land that client because the opportunity is so much bigger. There's no, like, you, there's no set price. Right. And the same thing goes for trials too. Like, you know, if you're, if you're gener- like one, once you start doing this for a long time, you start figuring out which clients are better clients than others. Right. And you know what questions to ask, you know what to look for. And so if you come across a client that's doing, you know, 50 deals, 100 deals a year. Um, like I've got one client right now, they're doing 450 deals a year and they're a team of four. Like if they're just, these guys are on fire, right? I want that client. I don't want anybody else to get in there. So I'm going to cut them a deal for the first couple months and, and you know, make sure that I get my foot in the door and nobody else can get in there. Makes sense. So are you pro trials? <laughs> Am I pro trials? Yes. I'm pro whatever I'm pro whatever is going to work. So if you need to do a trial in order to get the experience. How do you, how do you, ter- how do you determine what's going to work though? Cause you said, well, and maybe I cut you off. I've been known to do that. <laughs> well, what's going to work for you. Right. So, so, you know, for those like, and I see this all the time, like don't do trials because they never work. Well, yeah, of course we know that we know you don't have to tell people that, that trials work to get experience to get a case study, to get a testimonial. So they do. That's all there is to it. And, and plenty of other, you know, multi-million dollar companies do trials all the time in order to acquire clients. It happens. Like, that's what they do, right? So there's nothing wrong with you doing a trial, a free trial, in order to get experience, in order to get, you know, a testimonial and so on. It doesn't mean you're undervaluing yourself. It just means like, fuck, if you're, if you're a brand new marketer and you've never done ads for real estate, why the fuck should a real estate agent pay you any money? Like, that's my question, you know? Like, yeah. why should they waste their money on you? Like, you've never done ads for real estate. Like, you okay, maybe you've taken some training, you watched a couple of YouTube videos. I, <laughs> like, I don't know, right? Like, I wouldn't pay, like, if I was a realtor, I, like, I'm not going to pay somebody that's never done ads for... Shane getting mean tonight, man. I, 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 I thought I... I, thought I, I, thought I like it's just i see a lot of people like you know don't do trials don't do trials it's like well you know if you want the experience like do them no you know? I, the other I, thing it does too is it builds a little confidence right like once you can start generating results and once you start you know you, you you start building up a little bit more confidence it allows you to learn the industry it allows you to you know again open up those relationships you know and get mm-hmm. those conversations going it, 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 they, they, the trials themselves are valuable in a lot of different ways, especially if you're just getting started. Yeah, 100% agree. What about you just guys? don't do three month trials. <laughs> That's going to kill you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. What is the limit? I say personally, ten like, days. What's that? That's ten days. That's that was yeah, trial. I life. started breaking mine down to five. Yeah. Ten, ten days. Give me hundred bucks, $10 a day for 10 days. We'll get you some leads. And before going into that trial, it's a proof of concept so that you can see that we can generate leads. This can work in your marketplace and you can see how this can generate your new business. At the end of 10 days, make your sales pitch. Or if you've got the October 3rd masterclass, you could do a 48 hour trial for 50 bucks and get some deals going. <laughs> or, or, or the, the masterclass. Is that which masterclass? October 3rd. Yeah, that's yeah, that's what I was talking about. Like, just, let me think about that. that. October third. I'm thinking like you that for fifty bucks in forty eight hours. They should have some stuff going. Like you show them what's oh, possible. If you don't I, want to run a trial, just thing. just pay fifty bucks and generate leads. True. The last that's thing another way of doing. That I I always say is like make sure you have like a set like the set end date like you say in ten days, Aaron. Well, make sure you have that appointment like scheduled. Yes. That day and make sure they know. I mean, personally, for me, I started telling them like my price before we even got into it mm-hmm. to be like, this is how much it's going to cost afterwards, just so you know, if we deem this as a success. Here's the date. This is our scheduled time. Um, look out for, you know, we're going to get everything going, blah, 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 walk them through, have a nice little onboarding call at the same time, set expectations. 
make sure on the after that onboarding call you schedule your next day or your next call five days out, ten days out, whatever that looks like, just so then you're making sure you're getting back on the phone with them. Agreed. Hundred percent agreed. Um, I love this question. Can't take it, Aaron. Go for it, <laughs> Matt. Uh, dang it, I should have had you read his name. No, uh, <laughs> Matt <laughs> Middlestep. I think. I hope. I, I hope I said it right. Uh, how many Facebook leads does it take to get one client? You know, this is a great question, and I'm not 100 percent sure if you're asking it as a agent or as a uh, as a marketer because you it looks like you do both. So let's answer both. And I'll let you guys answer. I'm, I'm going to run to the restroom. I'll let you guys answer. The guy, the guy who reads the question. Right. He, he volunteered. He wanted this one and then he walks out. I so know, I, right? I, lo uh, I love this question. <laughs> I love this question. I love this. I'm going to read it. <laughs> like, <laughs> Jesus. I wasn't even paying attention. I can't even answer the damn thing. All right, Dan. So um, Matt wants to know how many Facebook leads <laughs> does it take to get one client? Honestly, I have no idea. None of my realtors actually ever told me afterwards, right? So I honestly, like, this is the best. This even comes up with my current, like, in my in the niche I work with, too. I still work with mortgage and real estate guys, like I said. But even the medical, no one ever tells me, like, so when I go, what's going on? They always tell me, I got to look back into my numbers. <laughs> so I honestly never know really what it turned into. I'm going to be dead honest with you guys. I don't know. I have no idea. No I answer. All right, Shane. So how many leads does it take to get one client from Facebook? Okay. Well, as a, as a real estate agent, I mean, what we're seeing right now is somewhere around like as low as 0.5% to as high as, you know, two and a half, maybe 3% with clients that are, you know, hitting nine months to 12 months. Um, we, we're, I mean, we're always expecting those numbers to climb a little bit, especially if you're nurturing databases. Um, and uh, so, I mean, you know, if you're generating 200 leads a month, uh, you can at least expect, you know, one to, you know, three deals after a certain period of time to start coming through. Yeah, so I guess my next question for, for you, Shane, then, did you ever, and I just started actually doing this, is taking their current email list <clears throat> and actually write emails for these guys. Because I started doing that, actually. I started writing emails for, like, my medical spas and medical clients is they started taking their database of clients and started writing emails to do like an activation campaign almost. Have you ever tried that? Like writing emails to existing clients? Writing, <clears throat> no, writing emails. Well, A, I guess you could go to existing, but what I'm talking about is the leads that they've already generated before you came in and took step in their business and take a foot in their, or step foot in their business. Did you ever take that list and try to and email them for, for them? If that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. For sure, for sure. So take like an existing database. Take their existing that they have. database and just be like, hey, because what I've seen is that when we've taken databases in month one is how we can get them some faster results. Because a lot of times, at least for people I've worked with, they're not even using their current leads. Like they're just like, oh, these people yeah. aren't answering. Like I'm not going to use them anymore. Like, yeah. The first, so the, the, what they already have. Yeah. One of the first questions that I always ask during my onboarding is give me a list of clients. So that includes... I want your entire, and when I say client, I'm in the same way we did for anybody that went through the seven day challenge, it's the same thing we do with the clients. So go, I want you to go to LinkedIn. I want you to go to Facebook. I want you to go to phone. I want you to go to Gmail and I want your existing client list. I want you to pull all that into a database. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take that database and we're going to start marketing to it. And that includes everything from emails to retargeting ads to like whatever we need to do, because those are going to be your fastest results. Right, Matt? 100%. <laughs> no, but obviously so wanna... one of the other things that we miss is like, if they have a recent list of leads, like that's a great way to build a custom audience, look like audience, stuff like that. Yeah, like we, we ended up, um, well, just recently, Matt and I, uh, okay. Um, <laughs> I have another client that had a list of 36, or like I think 35 or 3,600 clients over the past four years. Uh, we took that in um, and then uh, basically used that to build up lookalike audiences. There's a lot of different things you can do with this kind of stuff, right? Um, you know, yeah. you can do the... Like, if, again, for anybody who went through the seven day challenge, you can apply the exact same strategies that, that we do there to acquire clients. And you do that for your 
your ex like your real estate clients where you're putting out posts in front of databases or you're emailing out databases looking for referrals it's insane like it works so so well um i know matt teaches this in his course uh i know he did a seven day challenge for his real estate clients and that's how they were getting like they were getting deals in, in how many how long was that that challenge 14 days my the seven day challenge we did yeah it was seven days seven days yeah so so basically within seven days clients are getting results like we real had, estate we clients had clients are getting real deals. estate closing deals in under seven days like we had one client i should say we we i don't know that we had clients we had at least one agent who picked up a cash deal at the beginning of the seven day challenge closed it before the end like yeah. Almost, and the strategy, and again, the strategies are exactly the same as the seven day challenge where you pull in all your databases and then you go out and you start asking for, for referrals from those databases. It's the exact same strategy. Yeah. It's just like when you and I first talked about that, you go, okay, so you're just having people make more conversations or have more conversations. And I was like, yeah, but we make it a game. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Exactly. Yeah. Danny, switch spots hey guys, on us. Yeah, I got to hop off. What do you say? Hey, you gonna hop off? No, you keep hopping off. So see ya. I, I think he's. I think we'll he's see you, All right, Aaron. I think it's. I think uh, we got some more questions, and you can probably interview Shane a little bit. Why not turn the tables? Let's do it. All right. Where do we let, leave off here? Uh, let's see. Wow, oh, man, we got a lot of comments. Uh, all right. Let's see. see. Late Let us know, the by the way, if you're watching live, hashtag live in the comments. If you're watching replay, hashtag replay in the comments. Go ahead. <laughs> All right, Shane. So Juan wants to know, uh, has hiring an ISA team changed your client retention rate by a lot? Huge. And I think we can all agree. Anyone like, but Dan. Dan, we get it. You got to go. Like, see ya. <laughs> thanks, for, thanks for popping on. <laughs> get to go. Are you leaving? Okay. What is going on? <laughs> this, this is why we don't do a podcast. Because people will be like, what is going on? Like, if they can't watch yeah. it, it's difficult. Exactly. So, um, uh, yeah, in terms of retention, I think anybody that's doing lead follow-ups, uh, including you, Aaron, uh, you know, you're, you're going to see a better retention for you know one of the problems that i see with the clients that are doing follow-ups is they they can do like anybody they're the clients i work with typically during the onboarding process like and you know even before i pick them up as a client we're setting expectations telling them how much work this is going to be they all say they can do it and then a month one or month two usually <clears throat> month two or mid like in the middle of that second month i get the phone call this is too hard there's too many leads uh, the leads are crap. You know, like you, you go through that same sort of thing, right? Yeah. And what ends up yeah, happening? Just talking about it. <laughs> well, and, and it, it's it's tough. Like, you know, you're getting rejected a lot. You're calling a lot of the leads. They're not picking the, up the phone. You're having to make multiple phone calls, or you know, you're having to work evenings. You're having to work mornings. Some days you're skipping. You can't get to your leads quick enough. You know, things like that. And then other things come up, right? Like you're, you know, closing on a property, you've got bookings, you've got whatever, right? Um, so it, it just becomes overwhelming. And especially because, you know, as a marketer, you know, your, I guess the way you're rating your success is how cheap of a lead you can get. So you're constantly, um, you know, optimizing your campaigns to try to get those leads as low as possible to feed the pipeline with as many leads as possible. And all you're doing at that point is you're over, you're, you're creating a bigger problem for your client because they're just getting too many leads that they can't follow up with them. So what ends up happening is in month two or, or the middle of month two, if you're generating, you know, 150 leads a month, now your client has 300 leads to follow up with following month after that, they're going to have 450 leads to follow up with. Um, you know, if you get your lead costs really low, they could have, you know, six, seven, 800 leads. It's insane for one person to do. And for any marketer to expect their clients to be able to handle that is crazy. We like the stuff like, and I watch, like we have our team that I watch do calls, but like, I also watch some of my clients do their calls, um, sat in rooms with them where they were doing their calls. I, and the other thing is I have my wife where we generate leads for my wife and I watch her every single day 
call her leads and I see how difficult it is for an agent to do. And she's very, very good, very, very structured, very organized, but it's tough. It's very, very hard. Um, there's nothing easy about it. So why does the follow-up increase retention? Well, it's simple is because your client's not getting frustrated with it. Right. So you're getting, Oh, just give me a second. What's up? Yeah, and that's what you have yeah. when you're on vacation with your family and you decide to enjoy whiskey yeah. Thursday. The nice thing is Shane can hear me in one ear, but he's trying to ignore me. <laughs> sorry. So, um, so the, uh, sorry, I didn't listen to any of that. <laughs> oh, sorry, <man>. guys. <laughs> um, yeah, so the retention, like basically your client doesn't have to deal with, you know, all the, like you're, you're not getting all those bad leads. You're, like they're not seeing that. They're not getting the frustrations. They're not getting, you know, all those, like they're not being overwhelmed by leads or all what's happening is all their leads are being followed up with. All they're getting are appointments and they tend to be happier about it. Um, and so your relationship with them ends up lasting longer. And I think that's happening to you too, Aaron. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you, I think you hit it, hit it right on the head. I think just to sum it all up, even though you kind of covered it is, you know, you're running to these leads up, you had the ISA, you don't hear it quite as much because they're not calling all the leads. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> all right. So uh, Adam, I'm not sure how to pronounce Salah. this last name. Salah. Yeah, let's go with I that. Like it. If it's wrong. Let's go with Salah. All right, Adam Salah. See, he wants to know, so he's new to real estate marketing. But is it just me or are agents difficult to talk to? The ones I talk to, LA mostly, are prideful and difficult to sell to. Hmm. Shane, you want to take that? Actually, uh, Matt, there's an agent. Uh, you probably can contest this a little like, bit more. My, 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 yeah, I would say, uh, I, would, I, I don't know that I would say that they're prideful and difficult to sell to. Um, I would say they get a ton of calls from people that are trying to sell and majority of them are not good at selling and don't have a great product. Like, so that's the issue, right? You're dealing with somebody who's already frustrated that, they got two, three calls this today. You know, I was probably getting one to two calls a day from somebody trying to sell me something as an agent. Um, and as far as difficult to sell to, well, you, you're selling to a salesperson. It's not so much that it's difficult, it's that it's someone educated in the sales process, potentially, right? Not always, but potentially. Um, so yeah, let's see. Are they difficult to talk to? Probably more than more than uh, a consumer. Yeah, I would say they're difficult to talk to, but I think with a little bit of practice, like it becomes a lot easier. And, and, you know, another another thing too is you can stop selling to them. <laughs> oh, it's true. <laughs> Very good point. You can work with daycares. No, I feel like what are you talking? No, you just stop selling to them. Like this is what this is what you're doing. You're doing everything. Like if you're going to pick up the phone, and say, "Hey, listen, you know, I, I can get you 250, you know, or 10 new transactions, you know, every single month. Mm -hmm. um, is that something you'd be interested? Or could you handle, you know, five new clients or whatever the pitch is, right? Yeah, which is the typical pitch. So you're basically number 15 today. That's called me, um, and I'm just not interested, you know, because like you're just like everybody else. So you know, maybe stop pitching there are a lot of other ways to get clients, right? You've got, you, you've got events that you can do. You could go to BNIs, you could, you know, go to open houses. You could get like, there's all kinds of different ways they could put you, put you in a position where you're not actually selling anything to anybody. All you're doing is starting conversations and those conversations lead to, Hey, what do you do? Well, I'm actually, you know, I do lead generation for real estate and you know, oh, wow, that's really interesting. You know, we've been thinking about doing that. And I think that's what ends up happening with these conversations. You start building rapport with these people, you build a relationship and that opens up the door. Um, or your other option is to continue to sell, but stop making 10, 20 calls a week, start doing two to 300 a day. Like that's what you need to do if you want to do your cold calling or if, you, if cold calling is the way you want to do this, right? Yeah. I would say you need to spend three hours a day doing lead generation if you want to grow. Definitely. Yeah. Aaron, how much, how much time would you say your team as a whole is putting into growth each day? All of it. Nothing else matters. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. 
but um, but I mean, while I'm, while I'm playing, um, I'm only playing a little bit. So we actually will sp spend a lot of pretty much a lot of days doing lead generation, and we'll put fulfillment on like two days out the week, and all, and we'll still do like half day uh, focusing on leads, calls, you know, demo and client success, and then we we kind of got the the fulfillment side of things just kind of nailed down to like two days out the week. Hundred percent. Yeah, I mean fulfillment. Um... Yeah, and I don't know what you're offering, but a lot of times fulfillment, as time goes on, it gets easier and easier because with the more clients, like you have more similar campaigns you're running, you're, it's not that crazy, right? Um, and with lead generation, like that's the challenging piece. So if you can, if you can say, all right, we're going to do fulfillment every morning from 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. because agents are not going to answer the phone before 8, right? <laughs> or 8 to 9 or whatever it is, right? So we're going to do fulfillment and then we're going to make, you know, we're going to go out and, and we're going to prospect and maybe we're going to have client, uh, client management calls or whatever you're calling where you, you touch base with your clients, make sure everything's going good, figure out what you need to change for the one that's not perfect yet. Um, and you set that up for like an afternoon, one week or one day a week, right? That leaves a whole bunch of time, a whole bunch of time. Everything else is prospecting, sales calls, follow-up calls, making sales. <laughs> I mean, Ryan Steuben talked about it when he was here. Zach talked about it, although you probably can't find the record of it, but Zach talked about, you know, scheduling his day. Aaron, how scheduled are you? Um, So not quite that scheduled down to the very minute, but pretty scheduled in the sense that I know from pretty much 10 to 5, we're, we're, we're uh, clicking on all cylinders just kind of based on how our appointment is. And if our calendar is not full, then we're, we're calling and getting it filled up. Love it. I love it. What do we got next, Aaron? All right. Um, I'll let you take the next question. I don't want to mess up any names here. So. Okay. <laughs> Lily says, <laughs> that's how you do it. Your first name. Uh, <laughs> Lily says, Aaron, tell us about how you package your guaranteed leads. Somebody's been watching. It's Okay, Lily. So basically, we'll package it. Um, <clears throat> so I guess it's more packaged from a sales standpoint. And so pretty much we'll just guarantee um, a set amount of leads. And so any, any package or any service that we offer comes with a guarantee of at least 30 leads um, or your money back. Um, really is more for a sales and marketing strategy. Never have had to give anybody their money back, but it does uh, make it a lot easier for agents to get on the phone with you. Love it. What happens when you don't, what happens if you can't, you don't achieve your guarantee? What do you do? Uh, we've never not achieved it, but in the event that we've come <laughs> close, we would uh, pretty much, I'll spend my own dollars to, to get those leads. So, yeah. Don't, yeah. Don't we, we, we just, we just had a conversation with somebody that actually, and I'm not going to name any names, but we just had a conversation with somebody that guarantees um, a certain amount of leads. And no, I, and, sorry, it guarantees a certain amount of customers. I think that's what it was. Um, yeah, I, I guarantee a certain amount of customers. And I ask, like, okay, well, what ha Like, that's a big guarantee. If you're going to guarantee, you know, two, that's three new customers a month, that's a big mm -hmm. one, right? So what ends up happening if, like, you know, you don't fulfill on that? It's like, I just pray they never say anything. <laughs> it's like, okay. <laughs> yeah, so, so basically, we, it's a marketing <laughs> tactic, right? <laughs> yeah, that, that's pretty much what it is. And yeah, we don't go that far to say we'll guarantee the customers. I know, even even though that's you got real estate, yeah, right. Even that, you know, the process, it. it's not realistic. You know, we we've had people get pre-approved and deals fall through that are out of our control. So we just worry yeah. about the thing that we can't control, and that's the lead volume. Exactly. If you guys are watching, let us know. Are you an agent or a marketer? I'm curious what our audience is online right now. Uh, just comment agent or marketer. Let us know what you are. And don't forget the both. hashtag. Feel free to hashtag if you want. Uh, please do. Anyways. <laughs> so we right. let's see. We just got to Lily's question. Where are we at? Uh, I think Jimmy asks, is Ty Lopez's uh, marketing agency a good course to buy? Who's that? Uh, looks like Jimmy. No, who's, what do you say? Tate? Oh, it's Ty, it's Ty Lopez, Lopez. Social media. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't have it personally. Do either of you guys? I don't have it either. Uh, let us know. Have you bought Ty Lopez social media marketing agency? Was it worth the money or not? Let us know in the comments below. I, I think it's like anything else, right? Like you've got some people that just love them. You've got some people that don't. Uh, I've yeah. talked to people that have bought his course and that, you know, really like it. They got something out of it. 
Yeah. Um, and I think it's, it's like anything else. It's what you're going to make out of whatever you're learning, right? Everybody's got a different style. Everybody's going to drop some nuggets. Um, and I'm sure he does as well. So like, but you're going to get people out there that are, were expecting more out of it and they didn't get it as much. And then you got people that, you know, got a lot out of it and made something out of it. So. hundred percent. Cool. Let's move on. <laughs> Who's reading the next Aaron. one? <laughs> oh, that's on me. Okay. Uh, let's you... see. Yeah. When I say co-host, I meant like you probably take over. all right let's see um so chris is saying that he he said if you never work with an agent and never had a client do a rec he recommends a trial looks like he had some good experience there um let's see all right so next question joe sizzle has a question so as an agent i've been told don't practice on your clients practice with another agent and role play do you guys suggest role playing your pitch with other marketers Yes, yeah, I, I do. I do absolutely suggest that, and I'm a huge advocate for role play. Um, if you're, yeah, if you're not role playing, you're practicing like the stuff that makes money on people that you probably should not be practicing on, right? Yeah, so you're, you're risking your paycheck. Yeah, in our first um, student beta program, we did a lot of role playing. Well, not I shouldn't say a lot, but for the people that actually wanted to, and especially people that were really new. Um, so I get on the phone with them. We were doing role, like we basically, they go and pitch me and then I go back through what they were pitching. Um, and we just go back and forth and, uh, and then we'd actually, once they do the call, we would actually do a breakdown of the call after the actual pitch they did with the client. Um, and we just practice that and uh, try to get, a, you know, try to get those people better. We didn't do a lot of them just because, you know, some people don't really, you know, some people don't want to do them, but absolutely. If you can, if you can role play with somebody else, um, even if it's a family member or a friend or something, right. It doesn't necessarily yeah. need to be another marketer. Um, well, Shane, that's, kind of, that's almost how you and I started actually talking <laughs> was a role play. Yeah. yeah we, we were yeah. working on okay. Yeah, we work on our scripts, right? So yeah, um, yeah, that's kind of where we started. Yeah, you and I were we were we were doing a role play for scripts, and uh, then we we kind of started talking after that because we we talked about talking prior to that, but we never really jumped on a call. And then you were like, "Hey, you want to practice this?" And I was like, "Yeah, I want to practice this." And you were like, "Okay, uh, what is your background?" Yeah. <laughs> like the the way you responded after the call was like. Who are you? <laughs> oh, you're talking about that one call we did. Yeah, yeah, that was that was like our first conversation. That's right. Yeah. So Matt got it. We were doing some role plays and, mm -hmm. and basically, hey, pitch your services to us, right? And so this guy out of nowhere is like, hey, I'm Matt Kramer. Um, I'll do it. I'm like, okay, cool. And I think this was like, mo this was pretty recent after you left KW, right? Like yeah. your last job. And yep. you were just kind of getting into the digital marketing stuff. So Matt gets on. And uh, he's like nailing every single objection. It was, and I'm like, I, like I was remember thinking to myself, like, holy, like who's, like who is this guy out of nowhere? Like, this, <laughs> it's like we never heard, we never heard of this guy. I don't know who he is. Yeah, I didn't even have Dan Henry's course. I don't think at the time. <laughs> yeah, like it was just your objection handling was just absolutely like it was, you know, it was really, really good. Just well polished, right? Like, mm -hmm. you know, n nothing out of the ordinary. Just you knew exactly, you know, how to handle objections. So no, it was good. And that's, that, and that's exactly how we met. Yeah. So yeah, practicing role-playing, like, and I've met multiple agents as well in the industry that we refer clients back and forth when I was an agent, uh, just from going on Facebook groups and finding a role-play partner. You know, you talk twice a week in the mornings, do the role plays in the morning. Like it's a great way to get to know other people and network as well. Uh, that right. might be an, that might be an, sorry let me just last last thing about this yeah that might be an interesting way to start to, to spark up conversations with real estate agents hey i'm a marketer i'm looking for a real estate agent I can practice my pitch on <laughs> hey that actually that opens some doors that, that would might, right that might that absolutely would uh, it's kind of like our group was it was it Layton when i was when Layton said i'm gonna try that because i said uh, just go put your house up for sale on the MLS and expire it within 24 hours. 
and you'll have a ton of agents calling you. <laughs> you'll get oh, yeah, that, that's good. that day. Yeah. <laughs> So I, <laughs> we should make that we should make that a masterclass. How to get a hundred agents a day to call you as a marketer. <laughs> it's just zero ad budget. <laughs> yeah, zero ad budget. <laughs> it would totally work too. Uh, I don't know if you close anybody, but it would totally get a hundred yeah. agents to call you. <laughs> All right. So let's see. Going through questions. Uh, so Nick says that his trial client turned into a 1K a month paying client and been with yeah. him for eight months. There you go. See, it happens, right? Trials do work. Uh, let's see here. All right. So Gustavo says, uh, how many contacts should you be doing in a day? And so it's a little open-ended. So maybe he's saying uh, when, you're, when you're trying to attract clients, how many people should you uh, connect with a day to, to get to get a client? I mean, is it 20? 20. 20, clients, 20 conversations a day will put you in a place where typically regardless of your conversion rate, if it's 1% or if it's 20%, you're going to close one client a week. All yeah. right. 20. 20 conversations a day, not contacts or uh, not dials. There we go. Okay. 20, 20 conversations. conversations. All right. So then Olivia wants to know how much are you charging clients for an ISA and how much do you typically pay an ISA monthly? Oh, so yes. When I was getting running on the uh, prospecting piece, I did 30 contacts a day, not 20, because I, I didn't have the maintenance side of it because I was just getting started. So if you're just getting started, up it from 20. 20 is perfect if you are an agency owner who's doing stuff already and you have to maintain that. Just do 20 in the morning. You'll, it won't take you more than three hours. All right, twenty if you're if you're uh, established, thirty if you're new. Yep. Is that right? Yep. All right, and then um, so yeah, I guess Shane um, Olivia wants to know how how much are you charging clients for an ISA? Um, a lot. Yeah. <laughs> and then how much do you typically pay an ISA monthly? If you have your own ISA, if you get somebody from the Philippines, um. To get somebody really talented, you're going to be probably twelve to fifteen hundred. Uh, to get well, to get somebody talented, you'll be twelve to fifteen hundred. Somebody who's going to show up, somebody who has backup internet, somebody who has a generator, because you can get people, yeah, six seven hundred bucks a month, but they might not show up. They might have power outages. They might lose their internet connection. You know, stuff happens. So if you want consistent, reliable uh, ISA, month in month out, you can be twelve hundred to fifteen hundred a month. You might be slightly higher than that to get a higher talented uh, virtual assistant on the phone. Makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah. All right. So, but my um, virtual assistants for fifteen hundred to two thousand have beat every U.S. person I've had for fifteen hundred to two thousand. Yeah. Yep. Hundred percent. All right. Well, that's good to know. All right. Let's see what else we got here as we wrap this up. Uh, let's see. Aaron's like, I got to go. <laughs> <laughs> now that uh that gin's creeping down on me and i ain't got a refill so i'm crashing there you go <laughs> no all worries. right so uh, olivia's asking uh how do you walk in and pitch a real estate agent at an open house Ooh, uh, shane that is totally up your alley and it gives aaron a chance to refill um yeah i mean okay so i mean the only way i never again i'm i i don't sell like that's, that's one thing I don't do. I have conversations with people. It's typically, you know, the way I build relationships and rapport and so on. So open houses, I've always been just walking in and having conversations with people, which eventually lead, it always leads to what do you do? <laughs> like, especially for a real estate agent, because if they're going to want to sell you the house that you're standing in, they're going to know what you, what you do to figure out whether or not you can actually afford the house that you're looking at, right? So it's, it, always, it always, always leads to what do you do? And then you can get into that conversation about, you know, you doing social media and then, hey, what do you guys actually, what do you guys do for social media? And you can get into this conversation about, you know, um, what the agent does. And you can, you, I don't know, most of these conversations I've ever had at open houses. Um, and I'm always very, very picky about the types of open houses that I've gone to. I've mm -hmm. always looked for sort of that, like not the medium price point and not the highest price points, but sort of somewhere between that. 
And uh, it's because I always, you know, find that like the more expensive poems, the agents are less busy. And uh, so it gives you an opportunity to go in and talk to them. Right. Um, so, I mean, there's, I don't have a real pitch for that. Aaron might, because I know you talk about this uh, as well. Um, but for me, I've always just walked in and had a conversation with somebody asking them about, you know, what do they do? And, you know, about the house and, you know, why I'm there. Um, and I'm always honest about it. Like I love real estate. I like looking at houses. Um, and I'm just, you know, trying to familiarize myself with the, the market, the neighborhood. And eventually that leads into, oh, well, what do you do? And then I get into, you know, social media stuff. And, and that's pretty much it. And yeah, so I guess just to piggyback what, uh, what Shane said, <clears throat> um, when, when I've done it, or even when I do it, because I actually just did it uh, last week, um, basically, you're just going in to look at the house. And that, that's one of the first things they're going to ask you is what you do. And so once you tell them what you do, it kind of opens that conversation and that segue. And so then at that point, it's just a matter of connecting and, um, you know, seeing if you, if you can help them, you know, outside, outside of that open house event, maybe let's do lunch, let's, uh, you know, let's connect and, and have a conversation but it's really about building those relationships and that that's kind of what leads to the business. Yeah. And, and like I said, they will always, always ask you what you do. I, I've time. never, I've never had an agent not ask me, what do you do? <laughs> so, if and the other thing too, to figure out, can you afford this house? <laughs> well, it's not just that. The other thing too, is you got to remember, you know, especially the, the better real estate agents, they're business people, right? Like, you know, they're in the business of selling homes. Um, and so they, they do have some interest in, you know, what you're doing. And as soon as you start talking about social media marketing, there's interest in that as well, whether, you know, it's for their own business or just learning more about it for selfish reasons, like they're going to want to know more. And that's where it gives you an opportunity to say, Hey, listen, I'd love to talk to you a little bit more about this, understand your business, understand the industry a little bit more. Would you be willing to have a, you know, quick 10, 15 minute coffee, you know, Tuesday, you know, and, and it always turns into a yes. And if it's not Tuesday, it's going to be Wednesday. Like um, these guys like talking about their business. Everybody likes talking about themselves and what they do in their business. The other thing too, you got to remember real estate agents, they love referrals, right? So if they're talking, the more they understand, the more people they talk to, you know, the more opportunities opens for them as well. So you could be an opportunity for them. Mm -hmm. 100%. Um, the other thing I will bring up is, when you start talking to an agent, when you start talking to an agent as an open house, as a phone call, whatever, uh, a typical rule of thumb is the person who talks more in a conversation feels like it went better. Okay. So if you guys have a conversation and it's you and the agent talking and you're talking the whole time, you're going to get done and be like, that was a great conversation. You know, the agent may not feel the same way. Okay. Um, you want them to do more of the talking. You want to ask them questions. Yes, you can provide some value, provide some information. But ask them questions. Be intrigued about their business. You know, be intrigued about their their challenges and their problems and, and how it can be solved. You know, let that that pitch come down the road. But in the meantime, make them feel like they had a great conversation. The same way that they have to do with their clients, right? They're making their clients have a great conversation by asking plenty of questions, getting lots of information. You don't always have to fill every gap with with words. You can say, mm-hmm. And just look at them, <laughs> you know, I just, so I just, I just, I just met with them. Yeah. Just to, to say something about this. I just met with an opportunity recently mm -hmm. and um, I walked out of that meeting and I'm like, wow, this, like, I just had a two hour meeting with somebody and he has no idea what I do other than I do lead generation for real estate. That's it. That's it. That's all he knows. Nothing else. The entire conversation was about him and we just went through everything about his business his personal life his in you know, like right down to like like i know where he's vacationing next year his you know his grandkids names like I, it was like we really you know and that's something that I, I like i feel i get really good at um in these conversations is just digging and digging and digging right taking every possible opportunity and dig more into it so that you can get into those personal things because as soon as as soon as an as soon as you have somebody start talking about where they're going on vacation next year their kids their you know all this personal stuff you got them they now trust you you've built the rapport you need to now be able to pitch them on a 2500 3500 5000 deal 
um, they, they will listen to you and they will trust you at that point, at least to a certain degree to allow you to pitch at that level. Definitely. And the, the only way you can do that is to ask questions and shut the fuck up. And, and I always tell people this, like when you, when you ask a question and somebody answers, wait for the awkward, like as soon as you get that awkward feeling and that awkward silence, you know that you can now ask the next question. And I, I would say, if you've asked the last question, right, and they've answered, let the awkward silence linger. Let it linger. <laughs> just soak it in, right? Soak well, it yeah, in, because, let it linger and just look and, and smile and shake your head. Because, yeah, because here's what happens, right? The, 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 the person you're talking to is also feeling the awkwardness. Nobody likes awkward, right? Nobody wants that feeling. And the, 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 I don't want to say the better of the two, but like the, the most, the, the person that's actually doing all the talking will actually jump in and continue to talk, or there's a good opportunity there for them to continue to continue to talk and give you even more information. Right. So if you wait, wait for that awkward silence, it gives them an opportunity because they may think they're done what they're saying, but because of that awkward silence, they're going to continue and just start giving you more information and, and diving deeper into what they were talking about. Yep, exactly. People, they hate that awkward silence. And it, it, it works for our benefit as a salesperson, whether you're an agent, whether you're a marketer, it doesn't matter. You know, you ask them a question, you know, tell me what has you looking at making a move or we're looking at downsizing. Uh-huh. And there's this awkward pause and they fill it almost every time, you know, yeah. rarely if, if they don't fill it, they might say something like, yep, just want to downsize and go, Oh, okay. What's important about that to you? Like dig a little deeper and shut up. Yeah. Just dig a little deeper, and like dig a little deeper and shut up could be your motto. Whenever you're talking to clients, no one to shut up. You heard it from Matt here. Seriously. Yeah. And, and, and just to expand on that a little bit, you know, um, you know, as you like, you're talking about, you know, okay, what's the reason why you're downsizing? Um, well, you know, because our kids, you know, they've left home and they're gone to college now. So we don't need to, Oh, really? Okay. So well, how many kids do you have? You know, like start digging inside of those, those answers that you're getting. Well, you know, we have, you know, two kids, um, you know, one of them's off to college and absolutely start digging, but I would say don't dig too early. Don't right. dig before you hit the bottom, right? That's right? Let them hit the bottom. You'll know when you hit the bottom because it'll be this awkward, like, oh, we're at the bottom of this conversation, right? Yeah. Give it like an extra two seconds and like literally count it out. Like go one, 1,000, two, 1,000, and <laughs> then go. Because if not, it'll feel like 10 seconds and it'll be like a third of a second. Like seriously, it feels so long when you hit the awkward silence and you hit it right. But it feels just as long to the person on the other end of the line. Let them take the the, the silence and fill it, because they're going to give you something valuable. They want to give you something that fits into this conversation, something that helps you, something that helps them. Right? And silence is seriously one of the most powerful tools on a sales call. Definitely, definitely. And so um, I guess as we wrap this up, the last question we have here is from Joe. And so this is actually to Matt specifically. <laughs> he said, Matt, can you go over uh, what a conversation means or what uh, conversations you should count as a contact for that day? Yes. A conversation is somebody, well, in real estate, Joe, in real estate, we talk about conversations as someone who, you know, before I go there, if you guys are enjoying this, hashtag value in the comments below. If you're watching this long, Hashtag trooper. And if you guys have loved Aaron, hashtag Aaron rocks. Aaron, Aaron's our favorite co-host for tonight. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Aaron's uh, been our, our only co-host. <laughs> he is. He's the first person who's ever ever done a, a co-host outside of one of us. So it's, it's Aaron, Aaron, I have got to say, I appreciate you taking over. It sounds like you did a great job. Um, I love how he's ending it on time, honestly. On, yeah, on time, 11 o'clock. It's on right. time. Fair enough. <laughs> Uh, but at a reasonable time, more reasonable than I might have. Uh, so anyways, make sure you let, let those comments be, uh, be heard, but what a conversation, quickly, Joe. what oh, I was just going to say quickly for Joe, quickly for Joe, what a conversation means is 
in the case of a real estate agent, is having a conversation with somebody who is a, uh, that you were talking about real estate and talking about your services with. So for a marketer, it would be somebody that you are not necessarily pitching, but you're getting on the phone with and being able to say, you know, here's what I do. I'd love to have another talk with you soon. You know, let's set up an appointment, something, right? You're having a conversation about what you do. It's not somebody that says, hey, you know, this is Aaron with Keller Williams Realty. How are you? And you go, hey, Aaron, I'm a real estate marketer. And they go, click. It's not a conversation. Don't count that. You're only cheating yourself, right? You want somebody who says no, who says, oh, okay. You know, somebody who replies, starts the conversation with you. That's a conversation. You're having an opportunity. If somebody goes click, like you don't count that. Don't count it. I mean, that, that's the quickest way to see your conversion rate go lower and lower and lower. And then you have lower confidence and then your whole sales process goes to crap. <laughs> so make sure that it is somebody that you have a conversation with about your intentions. I think that's probably the, the, the best way to say that. Would you guys agree? Yep, definitely agree. Awesome. Uh, everybody's saying Aaron rocks, hashtag value. I don't see any hashtag troopers. Everybody must jump on at the last minute, I guess. Uh, but with that, thank you so much for Aaron for, uh, for co-hosting co with us tonight. Shane, we're surprised that you jumped on, but I guess welcome. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching tonight and uh commenting asking questions if you have other questions ask those in the comments we'll be sure to get back to those and uh if you made it this far again hashtag trooper i don't care if it's the replay or the live or let us know live trooper or replay trooper so <laughs> we'll talk to you guys later thank you so much take it easy guys take Peace. Hey, thanks Aaron. okay talk soon All right. I think